So this question starts off by providing us with a system of equations. The question goes on to say, in the given system of equations, k is a constant. The system has exactly one distinct real solution. That's very important. What is the value of k? So first of all, whenever we see the wording one exact, I'm sorry, exactly one distinct real solution, what that means is that our determinant, b squared minus 4ac, is equal to zero. That is the translation of that statement. So whenever you see that on a question, one distinct real solution, be sure to use b squared minus 4ac equals zero. Well, where does b squared minus 4ac equals zero come from? Well, it comes from our quadratic equation, which is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So what this is telling me is that I need to somehow get this system of equations to look like this here. So the way that I'm going to do that is I am going to isolate y in the first equation. Right, so let's erase this from around it. I'm going to isolate y in my first equation by subtracting k from both sides. So I'd have y equals x plus 26 minus k. I'm going to then take that y value and substitute it into the y of the second equation, right? So just using substitution to solve this system of equations um, at the y value. So instead of y minus k here, instead it'll say x plus 26 minus k, right? Just replacing the y value with what it is from the first equation. And then I'd have minus k equals x squared minus 5x. All right, now for some simplification, x plus 26 minus k minus k equals x squared minus 5x. Of course, that becomes x plus 26 minus 2k equals x squared minus 5x. And I'm going to solve everything to the right-hand side to keep my x squared positive. So I'm going to say this is x squared. Negative 5x minus x from both sides makes it a minus 6x. Right, so those are gone. And then I'm going to subtract 26 plus 2k from both sides, so minus 26 plus 2k. So I have x squared minus 6x minus 26 plus 2k equals 0. So in this case, then my a value, right, the coefficient in front of the x squared, that would be a 1. My b value, the coefficient in front of the x term, that's a negative 6. And my C value, the, co the numbers without any X, would be all of this, negative 26 plus 2K. So I'm going to plug that into my determinant here that I mentioned earlier. So we'd have B squared, so negative 6 squared, minus 4 times A is 1, times C is negative 26 plus 2K. And again, because we know it's only one distinct real solution, we set that equal to 0. Now for some more simplification, negative 6 squared is 36. Um, negative 4 times 1 is just negative 4, of course, I'll just get rid of that. Negative 4 times negative 26 is plus, or positive, I should say, 104. And then negative 4 times positive 2k is a minus 8k. That's equal to 0. This becomes 140 minus 8k equals 0. From there, I'm going to... Uh, move the 8k over to the right by adding 8k to both sides. So now I have 140 equals 8k, and we divide both sides by 8, and we get our final answer that k is equal to 17.5. So there's our answer, 17.5. Okay, so again, the, the main point here is understanding how to translate the phrase exactly one distinct real solution. Now, with that being said, I did also solve this using Desmos. So let me just show you how I did that. So for Desmos, I plugged in both of the original equations, right? I set K as a slider. And then basically, you know, so usually the sliders, they allow you to go between zero and 10. Um, I'm using the visual understanding of exactly one distinct real solution, which means that the two graphs should intersect at exactly one point, right? We know that one of these is linear, and we know the other one is a quadratic or parabola, right? So we know that it should be, 
that the line should be tangent to the parabola in some way. So that's the expectation. So when I first looked at, or maybe this was negative 10 actually, when I first looked at k values between negative 10 and 10, I saw that um, as I made k smaller, my green line went up, right? So that's the wrong direction. As I made k go larger, the line went down. So that was the right direction if my objective is to find where the two graphs cross at a single point. 10, however, was not large enough, so I reset my limit, my, my um, upper limit at 30, just as a guess, and then started to move up from there. It was clear to see that as I moved away from positive 10, right, my green line here continued to go down, and then I, I really also, let me make sure I say this, that I made my scale 0 0.1, so that I can get a pretty fine scale on um, how I shift from unit to unit. So instead of seeing like a 17, then an 18, I was able to check 17.1, 17.2, so on and so forth, until I found exactly where the lines intersected at 17.5. So this took much less time. So if you're comfortable using um, Desmos for this question, this is a way to do it. If you're not so comfortable, here's a math way to do it, which I don't think takes all that much time either. So now you have both options at your disposal. But the answer here is 17.5.